Gentlemen, gentlemen, welcome to another dad battle. Now is anybody, and I mean anybody at all, willing to face our champion? Gentlemen, my son joined the golf team at school, so I bought him an extra pair of socks in case he gets a hole in one. Hole in one. His dad jokes are so effortless. See that? That's why he's the champ. That's nothing. The other day, my daughter said a good Christian dad would buy her a car. So I said, well, a good Christian kid would walk. Because that's what Jesus did. Fathers! We have a dad off. Listen up, son. Just because God picked your nose doesn't mean you should. <laughs> when you start paying the bills, you can make some of the rules. Come on! Yeah. Yeah. Hold up! Who touched the thermostat? Yeah. yeah! That lawn isn't gonna mow itself. Let me stop what I'm doing and fix your boredom. Hi, Hungry. I'm Dad. <laughs> I love the smell of Home Depot in the morning. Oh, yeah. 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 Just wait till your mother gets home! Ah. Yeah. Oh. 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 What? Pull my finger. Oh. 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 Get in there. Get in there. You got this. Come on, Chan. Nah. Just rub some dirt on it. Oh. 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 Proud of you. You can do hard things. I love you, no matter what. When God made you, He made something very special. Proudest day of my life is the day you made me a father. I thank God for you every time I get on my knees and pray. And again, who gives this woman? No, 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 no. no you look at me. You look at me. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I do. <laughs> <laughs> Father's Day to you and yours from Inspire Church. I don't know if you guys know what we got planned for you guys today, but we have Lloyd Buster coming in here today to start off our Father's Day right. We cannot wait for uh, to see what he has planned for us today, and we cannot wait for you to see as well. With that being said, I'm not even going to hold you guys up. We're going to get right into it. I'm just going to pray us in and we're going to get started. God, thank you again for this amazing day, Father. I ask you just be with us and move through us through the rest of the service, Father. 
Thank you for all the things you're doing in our lives and ask you to just protect us through the rest of our day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. All right, I will see you guys right after service. Good morning, Inspired Church. You guys ready to worship? Happy Father's Day to all the amazing fathers out there. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Put those hands together. Here we go. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn till I met you. Come on, I know you know it. Sing it out. I was breathing, but not alive. All my failures I tried to hide.
I'm living in the light now, I'm living in the light now. Hey, hey, I'm living in the light now, I'm living in the light now.
there for me 
end Now I see How you were there for me of the Lord is moving among us this morning. God is for us, amen. We've seen him come through time and time again. And if God be for us, who can be against us? No weapon the enemy forms against us shall prosper. We've seen him time and time again. I love what the psalmist said. He said, if it, not, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, the waters would have overtaken me. In this atmosphere of faith, let's go directly before the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. Father, we thank you for your mercy and your grace that are towards us, God. God, that every sin has been forgiven, God, we bless your name, we magnify you. Father, we thank you for your love towards us that's so constant, Father, it, it daily chases us down, God, it daily apprehends us, it, it's constantly pursuing us, Lord. Even when we find ourselves far away, we constantly see your love apprehend us. God, we bless you this morning, Father, that every bit of sin, every bit of iniquity, every mistake, every failure, God, is, has been washed away and removed by the blood. Even though the stain, Isaiah said, was like crimson, though it was red like scarlet. Father, you said that you made it white like snow. Father, white like wool, that we stand before you this morning with clean hands and a pure heart because of what you did on the cross. So Father, we bless you. We magnify you. We say worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy is the one who took away the sin of the world. Father, we love you. And, and now we're your sons and your daughters because of your great love. It says, by your spirit, we cry out, Abba, Father, that you are our Father. What manner of love is this that we could be called the children of God? Father, we thank you that every bit of fear, Father, is cast out because of the love you have for us. Every bit of depression is removed. Father, all heaviness is removed. No matter what the lie of the enemy is, no matter what shame and condemnation the enemy wants to put on your people, God, we thank you that the truth is that you love us. The truth is that you forgive us. The truth is that you've saved us and set us free. That the, that the future and plans that you have for us are hope and prosperity, healing and life, that heaven is on our, heaven is on our side. God is fighting for us. The shackles that want to hold us us down can't have us and for every single one on that screen the power of the kingdom of God is fighting for them the inheritance that God has for them is sure the promises of God are yes and amen so we speak life over them in the name of Jesus hallelujah let's put our hands together for the Lord amen you may be seated it is always a blessing and an honor to worship the Lord with you here at Inspire Church on a Sunday morning. Happy Father's Day to every one of our dads, those watching, those in the room. We love you. We could not do or be who we are without you. And also, today is Juneteenth. So happy Juneteenth to everyone. Today is a very special day of celebration. And if you're with us for the very first time, you'll see a QR code also, a phone number appear on the screen. If you were to text the word guest to that phone number or simply scan that QR code, you receive a link to your device on how to remain connected with us and receive regular updates on what we're doing here at Inspire. So I'd ask you to do one of those two things. Also, at this time in our service, we do have an announcement video for you. So please direct your attention to the screen. Inspire Church, my name is Gabby, and here are your morning announcements. Hey, Inspire! We want to invite your children 
to our Freedom Celebration on Sunday, July 3rd. We're gonna have water slides, inflatables, popcorn, snow cones, and so much more. All activities will be during services, so make sure you're on time. Kids should come with their swimsuits underneath their clothes. Make sure you don't forget your towels, water shoes, and wear your sunscreen. Inspire family, we need your help. To serve with us, make sure you register online at Inspire Church Houston under Inspire Kids. The best part is everything is free. We're gonna have so much fun together. together. Don't miss out. That is all the announcements we have for you today. Enjoy the rest of your service. Amen. At this time, we do honor God with our giving. And so you'll see the ushers make their way through the congregation. They have with them the offering and the tithe envelopes. If you need one, just let them know with an uplifted hand and they will distribute one to you. Now, if you're not giving in person, we do have five ways to give here at Inspire. So please choose the method that is most convenient for you. I'm reading this morning from Luke chapter 15, verse 17. This is what it says. It's the story of the prodigal son. When he, the prodigal, finally came to his senses, he said to himself, at home, even the hired servants have food and food enough to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. When the prodigal son had left the father's house and he tried to remember back what it was like at the father's house, this is what he remembered. There was so much abundance in the father's house that even the hired servants had enough and enough to spare. And that's the truth about the kingdom of God, that even the servants, even those that aren't the sons and daughters of God have an experience overflow. How much more for we who are the sons and daughters of God? It goes on to say in that story that the father said to one of the sons, all I have is yours. I want to pray over you this morning. Father, we thank you that each one in this room, we have been called your sons and your daughters. I thank you that money is not a problem in the kingdom of heaven. And Father, I thank you that it's not a problem for the kids of the king. Father, we love you. We bless you. All of this is for you in Jesus' mighty name. We love you. God bless you as you give. We brought parenting questions to some of the wisest minds on the planet. You guessed it, dads. This is Ask a Dad. What should I do if my kids won't come when I call them? Turn off the Wi-Fi and watch them all magically appear. Will my children ever let me use the bathroom in peace? Yes, when they move out of your house. When we're playing sports, should I let my kids win? Absolutely not. It's not your fault God bless you with incredible athletic talent. Why is there peanut butter on the back of my couch? Why are there Legos in the fridge? No one knows. What if my kids don't think I'm cool? It doesn't matter, because deep down all dads know that they are so cool. How come nobody laughs at my amazing dad jokes? Because you're doing it right. Why can't my kids remember to do their chores? Because that part of a child's brain is reserved for remembering all the things you hoped they'd forget. Why won't my children listen to me? What? How do I get my kid to eat dinner? You look them right in the eyes and you tell them, you are going to your friend's house for dinner. Problem solved. As a dad, how can I dress for success? Two words, cargo shorts.
lift our hands across this room. Father, we say happy Father's Day to you, Jesus. Bless your name, God. Come on, let's worship him today. tried so hard to see it took me so long to believe it to choose someone like me to carry your victory sing it all say perfection could give what we don't
I was walking over here and hearing the worship today's Father's Day and we want to honor our fathers but how many know on this day it would be so special to receive a special touch and outpouring from our Heavenly Father so would you just lift up your hands and that's what I'm believing today that as we honor fathers but I also believe that God wants to give us a fresh touch of his heart, a father's heart, a, a father's heart outpouring today. Amen. Would you just lift your hands with me? Father, we thank you for your presence that's in this room. Father, we thank you, God, that you're such a good father, Lord. And we, this Sunday, God, I'm, I, I'm believing in this service, God, for just a special touch of your grace, a special touch of your heart, Father. Thank you for your father's heart towards us, and thank you for what you have planned this day. But Father, we honor you. We honor your presence that's in this place. I thank you for what you're going to do. And Father, we thank you for Prophet Lloyd Bustard, who you've sent today with a word for this house. And so, Father, I'm just praying over this service, and I'm so thankful for what you've already been doing today and what you're going to continue to do in this service. So we say, have your way, Lord, and we honor you. And God, I'm just asking, just as a special request, would you give us a fresh touch of the Father's love today. In your mighty name we pray. Come on, Inspire Church. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. 
You may be seated, and I'm going to do this very, very quickly. How many know today is a special day? And I'm going to ask that all the fathers, would you please stand so that we can honor you? Come on, Inspire Church. Let's give our fathers a big round of applause. We, we love you, fathers. We are so thankful for you. And I have the privilege, and I'm going to do this quickly because we have a guest. I have the privilege. We want to present this to our pastor who is, you know, for me, it's special because he's my grandfather. He's, he's like a father to me, and he's my spiritual father. And I know um, you don't have to be blood to this man for him to be a father to you. I know so many of us relate to him that way. And I just, I, I, just to be short, I thought... What could I say? And here's what I'll say because I've said so much. You're just simply the best. And I love you and we love you. Thank you so much and God bless you. And you may be seated. Wow, thank you. What a great crowd for a Father's Day, too. We welcome all of you dads who are here, and you mean the world to us. Um, I've been a father for a long, long time, and I can tell you that dads don't always get the acknowledgement or the honor or the, the, the credence, the, the attention that they deserve every day. And so thank God for one day set aside where we absolutely make it our intention to honor our dads because we can't make it without you, fathers. We need you. The strength of this church and the strength of our nation is strong dads and strong families. Last Sunday, in fact, we began a new series, Pastor Andrew did while I was in Africa, entitled Your Home, Your Castle. And man, I watched the service from Africa. He flat killed it. What a, what a weekend last weekend. Amen. The lamb is for the house. Amen. That was an incredible message and a great word. And this is a unique time because we are also celebrating today our first official national holiday, Juneteenth. Would you give it up for that? Amen. Praise God. And if you don't know the story, June 19, 1865, or Emancipation Day, marks the day that Union Army Major General Gordon Granger came to Galveston, Texas, and issued General Order Number 3, and that's just right down the road from where we are right now, proclaiming that all enslaved American or African Americans were free. This momentous event came two and a half, yeah, give it up for that, amen. (laughs) Praise God. This momentous event came two and a half years after the Emancipation of Proclamation had been signed by President Abraham Lincoln, the 16th President of the United States. And what is so amazing about this holiday is not only what it means to the African Americans of this nation, but our entire nation as well. But additionally, the Juneteenth story is amazingly redemptive. Have you considered that there are parallel elements of the gospel in what happened 2,000 years ago and what happened in 1865? That's because our spiritual emancipation proclamation from slavery in sin was proclaimed when Jesus paid for our redemption with his very own blood on the cross of Calvary. Amen. And that was over 2,000 years ago. But there are some who still remain in bondage today, just as there were slaves who were still in bondage even though the Emancipation Proclamation had been signed two and a half years previously. If you're in bondage, I want to tell you, you're in the right place. You can be set free today by the blood of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ our Lord. Somebody give God a shout of praise today. Amen. We are so honored to have Prophet Lloyd Bustard with us. Pam could not be here, but they are some of our very favorite and very 
most special people. They come here and they minister to us. This has been an extraordinary year for Inspire Church. Oh, I know what they all said. I know what all the experts were saying. People will never go back to church after COVID. It will, things will never be the same. I wanna tell you every Sunday I come, it looks like more and more people are returning, new people are coming. I looked out a while ago and wondered how long it will have to be before we knock out that wall up there and put in additional seating. That's what's behind that wall. Amen. We're growing. God is blessing. You know what I think happened in the middle of COVID? I think that everything people depended upon, everything they thought was sure and certain and would never be shaken, they figured out you can't rely on it. You need God at the end of the day. And there is a hunger for God that is awakening in our nation. If you're here this morning, and you are here because of something that has drawn you, I want you to know that is the Spirit of God. He wants to revolutionize, transform, and completely change your life. This year has really been awesome. Prophet Lloyd Bustard came with us to be with us in the month of January. And I'm telling you, a prayer revival broke out in this church and a worship revival. We have been on a roll ever since then. We never want to stop doing those two things, praying, seeking God, and worshiping. We're changing the atmosphere over the city of Houston. Would you stand with me and welcome Prophet Lloyd Bustard? Raise your right hand, point it toward him, and say, preach, man of God. Amen. We're so glad you're here. God bless you. Oh, thank you, Dr. Hurd. And let's give the father of this house a great big round of applause. I tell you, Dr. Hurd, I, I want to personally and publicly acknowledge your leadership in my life. Uh, we've known one another for 30 years, and you and that beautiful woman standing beside you have been some of the dearest people ever in our life. And I mean that with all my heart. Uh, Jerry is one of the most humble, beautiful souls I have ever, ever met. Pam loves you so dearly. She tells me, she says, I just love Jerry. She's so genuine and so beautiful. So I just want to acknowledge you today, too. And uh, Dr. Hurd, you have... Uh, You've been like a father to me at times, and you've been a pastor, and I look to you as my pastor. And uh, Pam and I was talking the other day, and Pamela was telling somebody, said, if you ever want to go and visit the greatest church in America, and she really means this, she said, go to Houston, Texas, and worship with Inspire Church. She said, they are the greatest people. They have the greatest worship, the greatest word, and the kindest, friendliest people in the world are right here. So I just want to acknowledge Dr. Hurd and wish you a happy Father's Day of this house. God bless you. And I want to acknowledge that young pastor, Pastor Andrew. Uh, he's just walking in grandfather's footsteps. What a glorious anointing upon you. I love your heart. I love, I love your passion for God and uh, your wife and your ch children. Then I met a, another beautiful leader here this morning uh, in the early service. I don't know if he's here. Uh, Victor, where, is he here? Pastor Victor, are you here? Wave to me. I think you all know who I mean. I'm getting old. My eyes don't see that far. I think I see you. God bless you, young man. What a great leader. Wow. I'm telling you, the best is yet to come. The glory of the latter house is going to be greater than the glory of the former house. God's raising up a generation of radical revivalists. Man, 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 they won't take no for an answer and they won't take doubt for an attitude. They believe that God can do anything. Amen. Isn't that exciting? Now, you know, you, sometimes God... We, we always want to be encouraged, and all, all, all that is good, but 
you know, sometimes God rebukes. Sometimes God refutes. Always take all of God. Rightly divide His Word. Amen? Oh, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. Oh, I can feel your heart. Don't do it without me. I can feel your heart here. I'm telling you. Lord, whatever you're doing in the season, don't do it without me. No, 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 don't do it without me. Lord, whatever you're doing in the season, don't do it without me. No, 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 don't do it without me. Oh, Lord, whatever you're doing, I feel God's hand over Houston so mightily right now. I feel God's hand over Houston so mightily right now. Oh, that's why I gotta sing city. Lord, whatever you're doing in the city, don't do it without me. Oh, don't do it. Change the season to city now, okay? It's your city. Oh, doing in the city don't do it without me oh come on just take a helicopter ride over Houston and sing look down and sing Lord whatever you're doing in the city don't do it come on fly over the whole city and look down and prophesy don't do it we need revival in our city like never before. Lord, whatever you're doing in the city, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Oh, you beautiful people. Here's what I want to do. I want to take a few moments and I want to share what the Lord has laid on my heart for this church, for this city. I got this word and I've studied it and I've never preached it. This is what he had, the old preacher hot off the press. But I know it's a word for inspire because I'm telling you, God's beginning to show me things. I see more land. I see more land and I see buildings going up, Dr. Herb and Pastor Andrew and Pastor Victor and all the other pastors, I, I see buildings going up, and I just see incredible things. Uh, I better get in the Word of the Lord here, but let me let me let you be seated, and let me talk to you for a few moments. And I want to talk to you about kingdom men. This is Father's Day, and then I want to see a whole bunch of people get saved here today. I want to see a whole bunch of people healed in your bodies. And, and if you're bound by any addiction, I want to see that broken off of you. And, and uh, whatever financial woes you're facing, I want to pray with you today, wherever you are, and I want to believe with you for financial breakthroughs, okay? And you don't look. If this is your first time here, don't feel out of place. Don't feel embarrassed or uneasy. We're all guests. This is God's house. And but he wants us to be at home when we come, amen? So let's go right to it. And, and I want to talk about kingdom men, but I'm probably going to, you know, I'm not leaving the women out, okay? But I want us to think about God's kingdom here, okay? You, do you know that really the first work that Jesus did and when, when he came to the earth, <clears throat> after he... Uh, left the carpenter shop and, and began his ministry, the first thing he did was to enlist people in his enterprise. 
What was that enterprise? Well, it was to rally them to come together and form a great company of society, a special society that he was developing, okay? And, and that society would carry out his vision, goals, and plans for the world. The name of that society, whoo, I feel Jesus here. <laughs> the name of that society was called the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. Now, there have been a lot of people hoping and praying that this kind of a society would be born in their midst, but it didn't happen until Jesus Christ came down to earth. Because when he came, he defined the kingdom and he set it in motion and Jesus Christ made the kingdom of God, building the kingdom of God, the greatest passion of his life. Now, all reformers have a couple of three words that they use incessantly in order to embed that word in their mind. They reiterate it over and over indelibly until it's embedded in, in the minds and thoughts of the history of their time. Jesus used these words over and over again, over a hundred times in the scripture, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. Can you say it with me? The kingdom of God. I want you to think about this, okay? Now, his kingdom that he was propagating deals with the real world. It doesn't deal with the surface world, but it really deals with a world that's full of sin, full of trouble, full of tests, full of heartache, full of crime and weeping and full of suffering and full of cursing, famine, all these troubles. And then if you can feel it, sense it, then when you open up to Isaiah 61, you read the program that he had in mind for his kingdom. In Isaiah 61, in verse 1, he says, the Spirit of the Lord, there it is, is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. <laughs> He's anointed me to preach. That's slow today, isn't it? <laughs> well, I can get it. Now, look, guys, I went back and talked with you some prayed with you some prophesied over his name. I'm kidding. He's anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor. Okay? He has sent me to heal brokenhearted people. To proclaim liberty to the captives. Think about that. And we've got them all in our city. We've got the poor. We've got the brokenhearted. We've got the captives. And the opening of the prison to those who are bound. We've got people in mental prisons, spiritual prisons, addicted prisons, amen, divorced prisons, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. Now look at this. Here's what his program does. He comforts all who mourns in Zion. <laughs> he consoles those who mourn in Zion. And he gives them beauty for their ashes. He gives them the oil of what? Joy for mourning. He gives them the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Isn't that powerful and wonderful? I like that. Okay, so he wants them to be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. So the key words of God's kingdom program, there's four of them. Liberty, comfort, beauty, and joy. And it just so happens to be that this is everybody's goal in life. I want liberty. I want comfort. I want to be happy. I want to feel, look, and I want to sense beauty in my life. Christianity wants everybody smiling, wants everybody happy. The kingdom of God, this kingdom that Jesus is building, it has no externals. And here's what I mean. The usual methods for propagating a great cause 
uh, was entirely discarded by Jesus Christ. He didn't come with a sword. He declined the sword. Uh, Money, he had none. Literature, he did not use it. The church, the religious church disowned him. The state crucified him. And so what did he do? He looked around to a few good men. He said, come here, follow me, and I'm going to make you fisher of men. He looked and found some poor good men, and he planted his kingdom vision and anointing in the soil of their hearts. And then he sent them out. It wasn't a big to-do, wasn't un- it was unheralded, but he sent them out to revolutionize the world. You know how they did it? They did it just by being good, common men. They made friends. They did good. (laughs) And some of them probably did some preaching. Some of them probably did some laying hands and prophesying. That was all good. But you know, everything they did, they sold the seed of their anointing from the kingdom of God in the lives of the people they ministered. So when they died, their anointing lived on in the lives of the people they helped. Isn't that beautiful? So the principle, of, the principle of the kingdom of God is purely social. Now, let me say that again because that's got to sink in. The principle of the kingdom of God is what I call purely social because it's not done by commandment. It's done out of contagion. It's an anointing. It's an exuberant anointing. That you catch and you say, I want to help people. I want to change lives. I want to heal. I want to open the eyes. I want to set captives free. I want to win souls for Christ. See, it's not done out of commandment. It's done out of contagion. It's not done out of a fiat. It is done out of friendship. Matthew 13 and verse 33 says, The kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal until it was leavened. What happens when things leaven? They what? They rise, right? Men must live among men. But we must not only live among men, we must influence men. Here's why. Because too many organizations and even too many churches, and even too many religious institutions and good institutions are too rigid for what is to flood the world. The greatest fluid for this world is you, man. It's you. War might have won some victories for Christ's cause, and and wealth might have purchased a pass and triumph, and uh, political power might have gave him a temporary victory, but in all of these instances, there is no note of solidarity Uh, no immortality, no universality. But to live through, to, to live through the centuries and pervade the uttermost parts of the earth, to be able to stand while kingdoms were teeter tottering and civilizations were changing and churches were fallen churches and crumbling creeds, Jesus looked around and said, you know what? The greatest place for me to build my kingdom is in the soil of good men's hearts. Too many opinions, not enough action. Jesus Christ does not ask me for my thoughts. He asks me for my work. No one has the right to postpone life for the sake of their thoughts. We've got a world that's dying and going to hell. So we don't need to be acting religious here anymore. We don't need, I don't like that singing. I don't like that preaching. I don't like that. I don't like that. Nobody has the right to postpone the call of God on your life for the sake of your thoughts. Why? Because we're living in a real world with real problems, ladies and gentlemen. And only a real true anointing is going to be able to break the yoke. Are you saying, Lloyd, am I not supposed to think? No, that's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is you've got to think in reality. 
You got to look at the world like it really, really is and think of what the world is really like and look at all the depression and sin and, and all the things that are going on around you and then pray for God to use you to remedy those situations. There are versions of Christianity which the self-respecting mind has no other choice but to disown. Because there are some versions of religion and Christianity that are dogmatic. They don't make sense. They're contradictory. Can I hear an amen? They're, uh, they're narrow-minded. They're unreal. They're, they're super theological. And the good old boy down the road, the brother down the street, he can't even find a place to live in reality in that kind of a world. And he can't even find a resting place for his thoughts. Jesus Christ had nothing to do with this kind of self-righteous religious teaching. He, com he combated it every, with every word he said and every action he did. In fact, it seldom occurs to people who criticize the church and, and, and who repudiate Christianity because it's narrow-minded, it's self-righteous, it's just another religion, it's uh, impracticalness, it's sanctimoniousness, it's dull, it's boring. But these were the very same things that Jesus Christ strove against and condemned himself. He agrees with you. Did you hear me? He agrees with you. Church is not supposed to be hypocritical. It's not supposed to be a perfect place for perfect people. He said, come on, that are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Learn of me. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And then Jesus takes the giant step and the giant risk of taking that incredible, sacred message of the kingdom and he placed it into the hands of common men. And I know he must have been thinking, Heavenly Father, can I really trust them with it? Or will they take this infinite, will they take this infinite luster and tarnish it by their worldly hands or their religious hands? Or will they take the great truths that I've taught them and I've demonstrated to them? And will they take these great truths and narrow these great truths into unworthy and unrealistic modes as it passes from lip to lip? But though the crowd is the object, the crowd of Christianity, it is not the custodian. You'll have to take this up with the founder of this great commonwealth himself. Any person here today or watching online or in your neighborhood, any person that will just look at Christianity, Jesus Christ, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Wow, everlasting life. I'm telling you, any person that will take the doubt, the walls down, and look at Christianity for what it truly is will never walk away from it. You will embrace it. You will raise your children in it. You will dedicate your business to it. You will become a kingdom man and a kingdom woman because I'm telling you, when it comes right down to it, the gospel is good news. Life eternal. Kingdom living is the only way to live in this dark world. Without argument or pressure, but by the mere practicalness of this aim and the pathos of the compassion of Jesus Christ, this kingdom message forces its dignified majesty on every serious life. The kingdom of heaven is a society of the best men do, working for the best ends, trying to use the very best methods they have. 
You can't count the membership because it's a number that cannot be numbered. Its methods are as various as human nature. Its field is the world. It's a commonwealth, but yet it honors our king. It is a brotherhood, but yet it acknowledges the fatherhood of God. It's not in our terms a philosophy, but the Lord, the world looks to that for light. It's not a political movement, but it is still the incubator of the greatest laws. It is more human than the government. It is more human than the state because it deals with the deepest needs of human nature, the soul. It is a propaganda, folks, but yet it works not with agitation, but with ideals and revelation. You could call it a religion, but yet it holds the worship of God mainly to the service of men. In this glorious society, the kingdom of God owns no wealth, but it distributes fortunes. This society keeps no minutes, but history records everything. Has no membership role because nobody can save themselves. It has one law, and that is loyalty. It has one message, and that is the message of love. Now, if you're going to look at this religion of Christianity and, and, and look at it as an extra thing to add on to your life, if you're going to look at it as something to separate and only for the compartment of the soul, if you're going to look at this as an extra, oh, well, it's an extra accomplishment. It's like my music lessons. It's an extra accomplishment. It's like a special talent of art. Then you are totally missing and misapprehending the nature of the kingdom. Because it is that which fills all in all. It is that anointing. It is that vision that fills every compartment of your life. The scripture says, in him we live and we move and we have our being. If you take away the action and it is not. You take away the... You take away people, you take away streets, you take away boulevards, you take away shopping malls, you take away skyscrapers, you take away the galleria, you take away character, houses, and it ceases to be. Oh, without, without these, there may be sentiment, adoration, superstition, mysticism, uh, whatever. Then you may even call it a religion but it will not be the kingdom of the Son of Man. Christ's gift to us is life. A rich and abundant life. A life meant for living. An abundant life that doesn't show itself in abundant dreaming, but abundant living. With real and tangible objects that has, and it has an actual purpose for it. And there comes John, the revelator, on Patmos. And in his prayer, God opens up the curtains and removes the firmament and shows him a vision that God has for earth. Now, I want to read this, and I want you to hear this. Revelation 21, 1 to 5. Look at this. John said, this is John, okay? He's in the presence of God. He said, I'm seeing something. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Woo! <laughs> I, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, also there was no more seed. See, excuse me. Then I, John, 
I saw the holy city. I saw the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. Isn't that beautiful? Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with man, and he will dwell with them, and they will be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. He saw a vision. Oh, I wish I had some beautiful music playing here right now. Because that verse needs music. Doesn't it, Dr. Her? That verse needs music. It just needs that. Oh, well, speak of musician, there he is. Wow. I'm telling you, miracles are happening here. <laughs> and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, no more sorrow. <laughs> I hate to watch the news. I don't want to hear the news because it's all bad. Oh, if I can just focus on John's visitation from God. Because he said, I saw a new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. The old earth and the old heaven passed away. He said, and I saw God wiping away every tear from their eyes. <laughs> then he who sat on the throne said, behold, I make all things new. No more tears, no more pain, no more shame, no more sin, no more sorrow. Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, write these words down because these words are true. It's going to happen, John. These words are faithful. It's going to come to pass, God, John. Tell the world. Huh. And over in, uh, oh, something stands out in Revelation 22 in verse 3. Can you put that up? Oh, and look at this. And there will be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb of God shall be in it. And look at that next verse. And his servants shall serve him. Wow. So, okay, hold on there. In this, in this now, Hold on, no music here right now. Thank you. I'm hard to get along with. I know I'm hard to work with, but it's humble people like you that God places in my life so you can put up with me. I love, love you. So here we see John, when he sees this vision, guess what, Inspire? You're confronted with a new definition of Christianity because he's dealing with the nuts and bolts of life. He's dealing with the city. It may be that the real definition of a Christian is a perfect saint being a perfect citizen. Because after all, he's dealing with a city. It's a city. A city has citizens, workers, policemen, lawyers, teachers, doctors, housewives, and truck drivers, and gas attendants, shopping mall workers. That's what he's dealing with. And we are here to make our city. We are here to make this city a good city. In fact, this is the present hour work for all of Christianity. Not do the work. The city is strategic because the city makes the town, the town makes the village, and the village makes the country. He who makes a city makes the world. Can you imagine what would happen in any city 
one, two, three, or four churches took on the responsibility and say, "This, you're the God of this city. We're going to have revival in this city. And we start knocking doors and we start sharing Jesus and we start healing the sick and, and setting captives free. My God, my God, my God. Can you imagine the kingdom of God would absolutely explode in this generation? People don't dispute you having religion in your church, but they want to see it in the city. All cities, any city, where citizens are baptized in the Holy Spirit, like Inspire. And all of a sudden, we're filled with the Holy Spirit, and the presence of God begins to flow out from the church into the streets, inundating every house, every business, every shopping mall, every gas station. Oh, my God. One Christian city, one Christian city can see the redemption of the world. And this was the kind of vision that John saw in his dream. Now, whatever reference you want to make from this vision, connect it with the world to come. I don't see anything wrong with that because I believe that's also. But I also believe it's equally lawful for me to look at that vision and say, you know what? I can connect that to the present world that I'm living in today. John saw a city. Descend him from heaven. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? He was familiar with the city. It was, oh, oh, well, that's Jerusalem. Where John lived. But he said, it was a new Jerusalem coming down. <laughs> he recognized it. Now, we speak of, of this Jerusalem as, as a synonym of heaven, but why don't you take it simply as it stands? A new Jerusalem. Try to restore the natural force of its impression and bring it into this day, 2022 in Houston, Texas. Oh, what if John were alive today? And what if John was in Houston, Texas last night? What if he lived in Houston? And what if he came to inspire church and said, Pastor Andrew, I need to get with your bishop. I need to get with your leaders. What is it? I had a vision. I had a vision. I had a vision. I I, want to share it. I want to share it. So Sunday morning, Dr. Hurd comes up and says, ladies and gentlemen, we really do have a special guest here today. He's John from Patmos. He's John the Revelator. He's alive and he's well. John had a vision of the city of Houston. He wants to share it with Inspire. What if he stepped behind this pulpit and said, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Last night I had a vision of Houston. I saw a new Houston coming down out of heaven. In the vision, I saw God go through the streets. (laughs) And I saw him wipe the tears from the eyes of a mother who just lost her son. I saw God in this vision walk through your city, Inspire. (laughs) And I saw he found everybody that was full of pain Everybody that was full of sorrow. He removed it out of their mind, out of their heart. He healed every broken heart. There was, I saw, I I, I just saw pain and sorrow disintegrate, disappear. It was no more. I saw, I saw people who were crying. They're smiling. He gave them beauty for their ashes. He comforted them. And then I heard a voice saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with you, Houston. Welcome to your new heaven. Welcome to your new earth. You want to be a Christian? Well, be one. 
How? By believing. Believe in what? Believing in Jesus Christ. Come on. I'm closing in five minutes. Don't. Please. Please. Believe in Jesus Christ. Believe in your city. Believe that God wants to have a revival in your city of Houston. Can you imagine having your street filled with the Holy Spirit? Oh, get rid of that page out of your mind that says it can't be done. It won't happen. Tear it up and start believing. Believe that Jesus Christ wants to have revival in Houston and he wants to wipe away all the tears. Anybody cry this week? Anybody know anybody this morning? He's come to heal the brokenhearted. <laughs> what else do I believe, Lloyd? Believe in yourself. Believe that you're a son and daughter of God, and God has anointed you to do the work of the ministry. Go heal the sick. You don't have to bring them to me or Pastor Andrew. You can lay hands on the sick. The Bible says these signs will follow them that believe. My God, if you've got a sick neighbor, go knock on the doors. Pick up your phone and say, look, I just want to come and pray for you. I've been burdened for you. I want to come and pray for your healing. And walk into their home and, and say, look, this is what I, I do it all the time, folks. I do it all the time. I don't just do it behind a pulpit. I just walk into a home and I say, look, I'm going to build your faith. God loves you. God can heal you. He's got all healing power. And the Bible says, if anybody will agree, it shall be done. I'm agreeing with you. And now look, would you let me lay hands on you? Yes. When I lay hands on you, oh, I always do that. That kind of ignites the miracle. I said, when I lay hands on you, you're going to feel the power of God flow from your head to the soles of your feet. You're going to feel that pain go. We're going to take authority over that cancer. We're going to take authority over dementia. We're going to oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're going to take authority over Parkinson's. We're going to rebuke tuberculosis. We're going to take authority over Lou Garrett's and you will be healed. That's the kingdom vision. No more pain. No more tears. No more sorrow. Believe in who? Believe in you. When was the last time you, you called somebody and said, would you join us in church today at Inspire? When was the last time? My God, I grew up on this. We used to do this all the time. I preached, Dr. Heard and me, I preached revival for weeks and weeks and weeks. Hundreds and thousands got saved. Night after night. Because that's what the kingdom is. <laughs> and, and, and the saints... Would, would call, would call at least four people. I want you to come to church with me tonight. I want you to come to church. Your neighbors are waiting for an invitation to come to inspire. Your co-workers are waiting for you to look at them with passion about the kingdom of God. So I'm telling you, you got to come with me. You got to come with me. It is so beautiful. Where, where, where do you begin? Well, begin where Jesus did. <laughs> begin in your home. Beautify your home. <laughs> Some of you need to put a new coat of paint on your home. Tear down that old wallpaper and put a new wallpaper up. Walk through your house. Take the anointing oil and touch your couch with it. Touch your kitchen with it. Touch every bed and declare, as for me and my house, this is a kingdom house. Joy, peace, comfort, righteousness lives here. Put it all over your house. Prophesy over your home and says, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. 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 
take authority over that demon of rebellion. Take authority over that demon of drugs. Come on. Take authority over that demon of confusion that's trying to destroy and mess your own child's thinking up. Whether he's a he or a she, take authority over it. You're a kingdom warrior. Cast it out of your family. Cast it out of your home. Somebody help me here right now. We're in a spiritual war. Make your home be beautiful. Make your home beautiful. Come on, I'm challenging men in this place. Start helping your wife out around the home. Ah. Walk through your home. Put new paint on the walls. Vacuum the carpet, shampoo and make it beautiful. Take those air conditioning filters out and make them fresh air. Drain your pipes, drain the pipes in your home until it's sweet. And after all you've done, you've arranged for heaven. <laughs> the heaven is not there because heaven's in you. Heaven's in me. And it's in my kindness. It's in my love. It's in my gentleness. It's in my sacrifice. That's what heaven really is while upon this earth. It's in my service for the kingdom of God. And after you, Dad, after you discover this revelation, sit down with your family. Teach it to them. But don't teach it as a doctrine. Teach it as your brand new discovery. Hey, kids, look what I've just discovered. I've discovered this. We're all kingdom people. And I've discovered that we are building God's kingdom. I've discovered that God wants to bless us when we're going out and coming in. I've discovered that God wants to bless us, the work of our hands. I've discovered that God has, has healed us 2,000 years ago. I have discovered that God wants to save your friends at school. He wants to save my workers at the job. He wants to pour out his presence all over this neighborhood. Live out your discovery. Live out your discovery. And after you've done that, head out into Houston. Head out into your city and do for your city what you have done for your house. Beautify it, ventilate it, drain it, and don't allow anything to enter your streets that are dark, rebellious, and demonic. Prophesy to your streets. Plead the blood of Jesus over your city. <laughs> if you any teachers here, wave to me, teachers. <laughs> Educate this city. Educate this city. <laughs> Educate it. Church it. Amuse it. Any financial people here, wave to me. Come on, wave. Christianize your capital. Teach people how to Christianize their capital. Dignify labor. Join councils. Join committees. They've got to hear a righteous voice. They've got to hear a righteous voice. They've got to have been led by somebody who knows where we're going. They've got to have that. If you ask me which of these are the most important, I say there's only one superlative importance. That's you. You, by far, are the most important person in the city. You, by far, your Christian anointing. This church is the greatest contribution in the city of Houston. If a city is Sodom or Gomorrah, if there be 10 righteous people, just 10, just 10, just 10. I'm here to serve notice on the devil. Your kingdom's coming down. You murdering, drug-infested, rebellious spirit from hell. Go back to where you came from in the pit of hell. If there be 10, just 10, 10, 10, 10. God says, I'll, I'll save the city. We've got hundreds here. We've got thousands here all over the world. 
He's gonna save it. He's gonna save it. He's gonna save it. He's gonna save it. Oh my God, he's gonna save this city. He's gonna save your family. He's gonna oh, He's gonna save your city. He's gonna save your family. He's gonna save your neighborhood. That's what he came for. It's idle chatter. If you think Jesus is just supposed to be a social reformer by just getting involved and helping organizations, that's not what it's about. No, no. It's not just about, well, we need better laws. It's not about that. No, these are among his objects. But his first mission was not to look at the law books, the crime statistics. Uh-uh. No, his first provision was, I'm going to give the city better men. Good fathers, good husbands, obedient sons. That's what they need first. That's what they need first. Because a good father can raise a great family. A good son can honor his parents. Oh my God. A good husband will always protect his wife. Oh my God, my God, my God, my God. I hope you're feeling something today because you are a kingdom woman. You're a kingdom man and God has called you for greatness in this city. If every company, if every corporation, every airport worker, if every company had a worker like the carpenter of Nazareth, they would never be a work shortage. They would never be a labor dispute. Oh my God. They would never be a work strike. If every street in Houston had at least one home on it, like the home of Mary and Bethany, we would see so many marriages healed we would see so much beautiful, obedient children. We would see the domestic life of our city transformed in this generation. Men are good men. But the goodness just doesn't stop there. Men are good leaven. Leaven makes something rise. But the good leaven has to mix with the bad leaven. We're called to be <laughs> in this world, but not of this world. We're called to change this world. Amen? And, and, and if, if the leaven doesn't work in our life, if it, what does leaven do? It makes something rise. What are you called to do? You're called to change the atmosphere. You're called to make men rise up to their greatness. Out of their pit of sin, out of their pits of de darkness and depression, you are the leaven to the unleavened society here. So the question is that I've got to ask is, is my goodness helping others or is it my own personal luxury? When's the last time I want a soul to Jesus? Am I really, really helping my city? Is my goodness telling to my city? Can they see it? Can they, do they see me? Do they hear me? Do they, do they feel me? Or am I just another resident here? Is it bringing one soul to Jesus? Jesus went about doing good. And here's the thing. He didn't stop. Oh, oh, I've got to do a religious act. He didn't stop his life to perform a religious act. His life was his religion. He went about doing good. Everywhere he went, he was about his father's, uh, uh, his father's business. Every village along the highway had somebody waiting to be helped. Wherever he found the poor, they became his clients. Wherever he found the sick, they became his opportunity. Oh, oh, I got to read one more voice and verse and then we're done. Revelation 21 and 22. The same vision of the new heaven and earth. Oh, but look at this. He said, I saw the tears wiped away. I saw a new heaven, but I saw no temple. For the Lord God Almighty <laughs> and the Lamb are His temple. I saw no temple. I saw no temple. 
You can't hardly drive down the street and not see a temple in Houston. They're everywhere. But there's coming a day when there'll be no temple. Could it be that the mission of the church is to delete itself? Could it be that the final glorious mission of the church is to end its mission? There's been a lot of things done in ignorance. You can't dislodge the religion of Jesus Christ from the hearts of humanity. In so many lands around the world, religion has taken Jesus out of the streets and taken the Son of Man and made him a priest of an order. In so many lands around the world, they, they, they have taken... They, they have taken Christianity, they've stolen it from the world, and, and they've imprisoned it behind altar rails. The old original Jerusalem was all temple. The medieval church was all temple. But this new Jerusalem coming down had no temple. Had no temple. There wasn't no need for a temple because the whole environment, society, and atmosphere was filled with God's glory. Oh, my it was a God-inhabited society. There was no more pain. There was no more crime. Nobody was killing. Nobody was stealing. Every, can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see the children playing on the streets? Can you hear the music of praise and worship coming out of your streets? God said, write this down because this is the way it's going to be. This is the way it's going to be. Now, don't you think I'm against churches because I'm not. In fact, if, if it was my mission to build the church, first thing, if it was my mission to build a city, the first thing I would do was take a stone and lay it for the foundation of the church. Because Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. I'll build inspire. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And then Revelation 22 and 3 and 4. They will, his servants will serve him. They will see his face and his name shall be on their, their forehead. You'll see his face when in eternity? No, tomorrow. Because you're going to go out and declare Jesus. And wherever you declare Jesus, Jesus is. Somebody's going to see Jesus in you, I'm telling you. And you're going to speak and prophesy love and goodness. And the, that, the word of the, they're going to hear the word of the Lord. My God, my God, my God, is this beautiful. Jesus said, he who receives a child receives me. This is how we become like God. This is how God's character becomes written on our character. Acts react upon souls. Good acts make good men. Kind acts make kind men. Just acts make just men. Religious or divine acts make divine men. The last thing I say, and then, doctor, you're going to come. But then, I, can I give an altar call? Can I give an altar call after that? Because I just feel like something is happening on a whole new level here. I didn't bring revival. I don't bring it. I come in and step into the waters that already have been troubled by the prayers of the saints of Inspire. The last thing I say is this. Be thankful for the city you're in. Houston. Texas. Be thankful that you have the chance to build the walls of your city a little closer to heaven. And as the weeks go by, as you continue to worship, and as the day breaks tomorrow, as you face the world, seek your city. Seek God for your city. Lord, whatever you're doing in the city, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Dear Lord, Lord, bless the policemen doing the work of the kingdom. Bless the doctors doing the work of the kingdom. Bless the lawyers doing the work of the kingdom. Bless all the teachers doing the work of the... Oh, God, we, we're not going to lose our schools. We're going we're gonna to restore our schools in the name of Jesus Christ. Because, God, there's a new Houston coming down out of heaven. I'll be back to pray for you in just a moment. 
Amen. What a word. Can we give God just some praise for that word? Wow. We, we, and we, I want to do this very, very quickly because how many of you feel the Lord doing something in the room right now? Amen. And we want to give Prophet Lloyd time and we want to give space for God to move. So we're going to sow into our guests. How many you know it is an honor to sow? And here at Inspire, this is our principle. This is something that we live by. We sow into the word. Amen. And today I'm just going to ask that you go ahead and get your offering ready. They're going to put up the five ways you can give. And how many of you want to be a blessing to this man of God today? Amen. And so right now we're going to go ahead and prepare that offering. And, and, and if you need an envelope, all you got to do is slip up your hand or you can give these ways. Man, what a word. You know, there's a scripture that came to my heart as, as, as you were talking about reaching and influencing peace people. Listen to what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 2. He said, for we are the aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. I just felt with that word, that, uh, I don't know about you, but a passion rose up in my heart this week. How many you know where you work and the people you run into every day are a divine opportunity? And I'm praying with this word that, that we start seeing our everyday assignments as a mandate. That's where our ministry is, amen? And I'm praying that this, this week, more than ever, that we would start being the aroma of Christ. How many of you want to carry revival? You want to carry the presence, the aroma of Christ wherever you go. Amen. So get your offering ready. I want to pray over this and I'm going to hand this right back over to prophet Lloyd. Would you stand with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the, for the opportunity to sow into, your, into the word and into this man of God, into their ministry. Father, we consider it an honor, Father, as we sow into this word, because this word was not just a, a word for us, it's a word for our city. We are actually sowing in to city transformation. We're sowing in to what you want to do through Inspired Church, through our lives to impact this city for the kingdom of God. So Father, we thank you for that opportunity. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Oh yes, they wanted me to mention this. Fathers, do not forget, we have a gift for you before you leave the building today. We have cups, for uh, coffee mugs, specialized for every single father in the lobby. Listen, I know it's Father's Day and I've already went over my lot of time. And Dr. Hurd, I thank you for having mercy on me and thank you for this congregation. Stay with me, but I, wanna, I do wanna close this out with salvations and mi mi miracles. Here's all you have to do after you've given. And by the way, thank you for your giving. I so appreciate this so much. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I pray God just gives it back 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold to you. I know this. I'm good soil. I'm not perfect, but I'm good soil. I'm a kingdom, kingdom man. Amen. And we're living in a time of miracles. But here's what I want to do. And this is what we did in the first service. I'm going to invite every man. If you, first of all, if you're in here and you say, Lloyd, I've never been saved. I really, I, I believe in God. I love God. But, uh, you know, I don't know if Jesus Christ, if, if I were to die today, I don't know if I'd go to heaven. Well, I'm, I'm here to take, the, to take the hope so and not know so and put in the no. I will lead you to Jesus Christ here today. You don't have to be embarrassed and nervous about it. And you don't have to go find a suit. Just come as you are, man. Just come as you are. But I know this day has been for you because God is going to use you to impact this city in a mighty revival. This won't take long, but if you'll leave your seat when they start singing, Lord, whatever, if you're a first-time guest, you don't have to. You say, well, I don't want to get COVID. I understand that. But if you say, I, I want to come down, I want to get saved. Well, come on down, you can, or you can get saved back there. If you haven't been water baptized in the beautiful name of Jesus, they got a baptistry. They'll baptize you because the scripture says today is the day of salvation. If you want to dedicate your life to God, 
I want you to come. If you are backslider, lukewarm, if you say, Lord, I need to rededicate. This service did something for me. I, I've got to rededicate. Come on down here when they start singing. If you need a miracle or a healing, come on down here. And I promise you, I'm going to lay hands on you. And God is going to touch you in a mighty way. So when they start singing, don't even think about it. Take your wife by the hand, your son, your daughter, your husband, and just first time guests and just come on down and say, I want to be saved. I need a touch. Are you ready? Let's go. Here we go. Oh, Lord. Okay, come on down. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's the way to do it. Come on, young person. Come on, son, daughter. That's the way to do it. Bring your family down. Think about your home. It's going to be so blessed. Think about the changes that are coming in your Wow, wow, wow. What a phenomenal service. A special thank you to Pastor Lloyd Bustard for coming in and just bringing in our holiday in a, a special way. Guys, I just want you guys to leave here. I want you guys to be careful, be safe, and enjoy your uh, your Father's Day. I'm going to leave you guys with just three things really quick. If you have not signed up for our daily text devotionals, which is a small way for you to, a great way for you to wake up your morning with Pastor Hurd. He just gives us a small message, uh, a song he's listening to, and a scripture that he's reading along with. And I believe that that's a perfect way to start off my morning, and I believe it'll be a great way for you to start off yours. Also, guys, if you have not heard about the Inspire Groups, please go to InspireChurchHouston.com and sign up for an Inspire Group because here in Inspire Fellowship is so, so, so important. So go to InspireChurchHouston.com and get that done. Last but not least, guys, if you need prayer, baptism, or salvation, please be sure to scan the information on the screen because we want to get these done, things done as fast as possible for you. We know they're important to the kingdom of God, and we also know that they're just important for you. So with that being said, just scanning the information on the screen, and we're going to get that out of the way, okay? Um, our Spanish speakers, we still have service for you guys today at 2 o'clock. And uh, last but not least, I'm going to leave you all with a, a bit of a, a joke, huh? So what up? Uh, no, nah, I'm just playing. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But I'm just going to pray us out, and I just hope we have a great rest of the day, all right? God, thank you again for this amazing service. Father, I just ask that you move with us, be with us through every step that we take, Father. Thank you for all the things you're doing in our lives, and I just ask you to just keep us protected. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. All right, guys, I will see you at the next time. <laughs>